Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Wyman. I am a business owner and a new mom. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss why I stopped speaking at uh, children's events. It's, it's a sad, sad video, but if you're gonna do outreach, it's good to hear about failures. And this to me was a failure. And uh, so pretty much just a quick overview about me, if you don't already know, um, I've done some outreach for the last probably five or six years, um, and I've given back to kids in my community in Arizona, Thanksgiving meals, Christmas meals, um, clothes, uh, toiletries, things like that. And so I was approached by a local school to speak once a month to the kids that were underprivileged at their school. So I thought, oh wow, this is a great opportunity for me. Yes, it's, you know, it's nothing was paid or anything like that. It was all, it was a free event that I had to go out of my own pocket to do and my own time to do. Um, but I thought this was a really good practice for what I had planned. And I had, I wanted to do something on a way bigger scale, um, but you know, I'm still, I, I still have a business. So that's completely, completely separate from this, but a, an actual business that I have to run and manage. And it's a pretty, it's a successful business. And so, um, but I was like, you know, I have, I have one day out of the month. What's that? Right. So, um, to start off, you know, I came from a, a single family, a single parent home. It was abusive. Um, and it was really, really, really tough. I was able to get out of that, not by myself, but I was able to get out of that situation and live a very great full life, an amazing life now. And I wanted to speak, and the reason why I wanted to speak to kids that kind of came from the same background as myself in Arizona, and I'm like, oh, you know, I came from this, I can help them speak positivity like people spoke to me, and it's gonna be great, right? Well. <laughs> The reality is, uh, this I went to one of the events that I was hosting, and a couple of the kids was dealing with abuse. And I thought I was ready for this, but I wasn't ready for this. Because when you're dealing with underage kids, obviously they are supervised. And uh, some of the, the discussions weren't supervised, but the majority of them were supervised. And during those supervised things that we did, one of the kids was like, you know, I'm getting abused by a parent and I don't know how to handle it. I really don't know how to handle it. And me as an adult, sorry, there's the way that the supervisor and everybody wants me to say, you know, the, the tell a teacher, tell a uh, supervisor, let everybody know. But this happened to me in real life. And I let, I didn't even let anybody know. They saw the markings on my siblings legs and on me and I told and it was one of the most like pivotal points in my life because I had to make decisions adult decisions at like 13 and 12 and it was like I I didn't know if I made the right decision but it was all on me because I was the only one that was old enough to actually speak of what's going on and so when this happened to me, um, you know, the, my parent was like, you know, well, they can take you from me and then you're going to be split up from your siblings. You're going to go into foster care. They're going to split you up. You'll probably never see them again. You might, you may not, who knows? And that was so scary for me. It was hard. Even till this day, it kind of brings me to tears because um, they meant everything to me. And I'm like, if I can't protect them, you know, I, I won't be able to protect them if, if they get split up for me. If some, somebody messes with them, I can't protect them. I won't have access to them. That I will not allow. And so CPS came and they brought the van to take us. Um, provided that my, whatever I was saying, my testimony served that we were actually getting abused. But I said against it, I said, nope, that did not happen. Uh, my sibling fell this is what happened and he does this all the time. He's always been doing this. This is just the way that it is. I don't know, you know, the nurse, I tried telling her, but she wouldn't listen to me. 
So then they did not take us. And so when the kid recently, not recently, but a few, you know, last year, a couple years ago, told me that they were getting abused, it was that all over again. You know, what do you say? And whatever I said, I remember I was like, you know, you have, you have two options and I can't, I can't tell you which option to take because this is kind of your decision. And I hate that this has to be your decision. I know that you're asking me for guidance, but I had the same decision to make. And I went through the scenarios with them and then we kind of just brushed past that. And, um, I did tell her that it's going to get better. It's just may not get better right now. And I know people that are watching this is probably going to be like, that's not good enough. You should have done this. Or you should have done that. You don't know. I mean, unless you've been in the situation, you honestly, you don't really, you, you can't say that, oh, you should have said this. You should have said that. Because when you are making these decisions at that age, even now, you know, as an adult, I feel like I've made the right decision. Um, but, you know, the nurse, I remember back then, she was so, she wanted us taken with CPS. She was adamant on getting us taken. And she became the enemy to me. Because I'm like, you know, you don't understand. If I go into foster care and I get split up, that's not a better situation. That's actually a worse situation. Because now as an adult, I know kids that went through foster care. And it wasn't better for them. They got abused by other kids, by people that were taking care of them. They were neglected still. And then at 18, they were just, they were supposed to just figure it out on their own. They were put out on the streets. That's not a better situation. You know what I mean? So when you're doing these outreaches, there may come a time when you are you kind of come to this this road where this is a really hard decision. It's going to get you very discouraged. But if you need to take a break, take your break. And also know that, and this is something that, I, that I've learned recently, that you are surrounded by people that need positivity, need guidance, need help every day. You just don't, you know, you're not having these one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, so you don't know. But the... A uh, person, the maintenance person that you are walking past or you say hi to every day needs that. The receptionist that you are seeing every day needs that. Um, people that you're working with need it. People at the coffee shop that you go to every day need it. You know, the, it's just because, you know, if you are not going out there and speaking to people out, like, as an outreach, you can still help people every day by just speaking positivity. You don't have to go out and do that. I personally have taken a break for a little bit because I am a new mom. My baby's four months old. So I'm putting my energy into other things. Plus, I'm still running a business. Um, so that also, that's also a lot for me too. Um, and I'm, I'm also a wife. So there's way more other things that I put my energy into. But I am going to still do outreaches. I am still going to help people. Um, but that definitely, you, there's going to come a time where you are going to want to like, you wouldn't know what to do and this is normal. And, uh, but I wanted to share my story so that everybody could, you know, everyone who's doing this can understand and, um, know that, you know, you're not the only one that's went through this. It's normal to not have the right thing to say. But um, doing positive things for people every day definitely makes a difference. So I hope that this video helps. If it does, please like it. Uh, comment on your experiences. Um, please be nice to me on this. This was really, really hard for me to share because, um, you know, it's, I, I've, I've been hard on myself with this. So um, I'll see you guys in the next one, and you guys have a good day.